cushions and throws and bolsters. I, I probably won't actually practice with you, um, but I'll practice it later. But it's just really to show you. And it's a bit of a whistle through a few of the poses, um, only because we don't really have time. And if I just put you into a restorative pose as normal, you don't have time for two and a half an hour. So these poses are so that you can get into them and know how to pad yourself and know how it should feel. Option also this morning is to go for a slightly more active version. Maybe you don't want to get up and lie down and go completely back into restorative yoga. So we're starting on our back for a breath practice, but make sure you've got all your bits and pieces nearby. I've got big piles of things here to show you. So we're just lying on our back on the mat. Now you might want a cushion under your head, you might feel your hips are a bit hard on the floor. Start to cushion wherever you feel uncomfortable. That's the idea of restorative. It's not like yin yoga. It's not pushing pressure through joints and things. It's, um, it's about really being able to relax every point of your body. So I'm suggesting that you come into Sukta Baddha Konasana with your feet together and then use your bricks to prop under your thighs. So that that thigh falling out feeling stops and you just feel as if you're getting that gentle opening without having to um, hang in there kind of style. If you do want that feeling, then take the bricks away and you'll get more of a, a yin style through your hips. They're not un, unlike each other, the poses. Another option if you want to go really active is to put the bricks under your feet and bring your feet together. So that really will give you a bit more of a hip opening sensation. So this isn't a restorative pose necessarily, but it might be for you if you can relax into it. But I would suggest padding otherwise. And if you don't feel comfortable in that position, just bring your feet out to uh, Shavasana. So as you lie here, just in Shavasana for a second, just take a quick body scan and feel anything that feels not just mildly uncomfortable. So it might be the back of your hands feel cold on the floor, I can feel that. So therefore we would normally suggest putting a, a, a low cushion or a soft blanket or a throw underneath your hands, just so that they feel warm and comfortable so they can then relax. Might be your elbows or your shoulders or your hips, possibly that feel a little bit uncomfortable. So again, you might want to just soften that with a, a throw is a good thing or a blanket because they're not too puffy and high. You don't want to be forcing your joints into odd positions. You just want to be able to relax a bit more into the surface below you. Sometimes doing it on the bed is a nice way of doing it if you're restoring yourself or um, not using the mat, but using a fluffy carpet that you've got. Uh, so just so that you feel there's nothing really shouting for your attention and you can give yourself, give yourself completely to what you're doing. Okay, so now let's come to a little breath practice to begin. Bring your hands together if it's comfortable onto your belly, into that diamond shape, wherever your feet and legs are, it doesn't matter. So bring your hands together, make sure your elbows aren't dangling in midair. So again, stuff something under your elbows if you want to make them more comfortable. And let go of anything through your shoulders that might make you hold on. If your fingers separate then because you use the floor to support you, that's fine. Find the breath now and inhale through your nostrils for four, your count of four. And then exhale for four when you're ready. And the next one, think of inhaling towards your diaphragm in the middle of you. As you inhale, feel the spread across the middle of your body. And maybe your upper chest as well and exhale and release for four. Working towards the diaphragm again, it might be coming a little bit more relaxed because now you know what you're doing. Inhale for four. Exhale for four. So in the next three breaths, see if you can take the exhale count up to five. Inhaling towards your diaphragm for four, still four on the inhale, but just extending and expanding and giving a little, little bit more on the exhale. So the trick here is not to push the exhale out too quickly or you'll come to the end and feel like you're holding onto your breath. Just let it trickle out is the answer to extending the breath.
So after your next exhale of five, inhale for four, and see if you can extend to a count of six on the exhale. If it's not for you and it's making you feel anxious or not right, then don't do that. Just count four. Otherwise, try to expand the exhale to six. And as you do, really give the whole of your body into whatever's supporting you. Counting helps you to slow it all down. We're switching on our parasympathetic nervous system here. Our rest and digest. So very easy pose, very easy, easy breath practice to just release the end of the day, a great one to use. As I say, we're not staying too long in each one. So it might be that one pose particularly resonates with you. Okay, so now the next one, still lying here. What we did yesterday, well, uh, the day before, was we brought a right leg up, folded it, and then we either brought it up on top of our thigh in figure of four, or we tucked it under our leg in figure of four. Find, first of all, which one suits your hip this morning. And then rather than having your leg dangle again, pop a brick under it or a cushion or whatever feels that it'll fit that space. So no forcing, but have something that you can actually give your leg into. So in between yin and restorative, that position really, you're still working a lot through your hip. Um, on the top half, rather than crossing the arms into a figure of four, just give yourself a hug. So take your right arm under your left and tuck your a hand around the back of your shoulders. Give yourself a hug and then let gravity just release your arms down into your shoulder sockets and down into the floor beneath you. So anybody that wanted a bit more active pose here that's not finding this enough for their brain possibly this morning, you can go into figure four here. So you can bend the left leg, bring the right leg up. That might be enough with the hug, or you might even want to take your hands behind your left thigh and bring yourself up and then lower down into figure four with the left foot lifted off the floor. That's much, much more active, not restorative. So you decide if that's what you want this morning, but there's a lot of hanging on there. And believe me, you build up a lot of pressure and tension into your shoulders, which isn't the point of restorative. It's more the point of dynamic. So here we're just breathing and finding that giving through our right hip particularly, opening up that tight area where we're gonna sit down possibly all day. So again, these are going quite whistling through these. By the time you've padded yourself and got into it, you're hardly able to experience it. But we're going to move now to the other side, so the other leg. So decide, you may take the same position. You might want to try one of the others. You might want to bring in more cushioning. You might feel your head's a little bit hard on the floor. Grab something quickly and stuff it under whatever's calling for your attention. And then bring your left leg into the position you want in figure of four. So it might not be the same on this side. It might be your hips a little bit more open and you can tuck it under. As I say, not quite restorative per se, this. Um, it is moving more towards yin. But if you can relax the rest of your body and feel everything's a little bit cushioned, then you'll still get a lot out of it restoratively, but you're still working a little bit with yin here through your left hip and through your shoulders. So it's really just to go into it for a minute or so and decide if this is something that you feel is doing you good. And if it is, then remember this pose you can take them on your own. You can lie here for half an hour. That's the whole point of restorative is to take something that you need at that moment. It might not be the same thing today and tomorrow. Okay, so let's come out of that one carefully. Arms and legs untangling. Make sure you've got some things near you still that you can catch a hold of. 
Um, we're going to go into a version of Apanasana or Happy Baby here. So um, you could use your bolster or you could roll up a nice thick throw like I've got or use cushions or your pillow wrapped in a throw here. So on your back, you're going to bring your knees in one at a time and place whatever you're using for padding on your belly. So bring your knees in and find your thighs in resting on whatever the padding is. Now, I find here that there's still a little bit of hanging on goes on with me because my hips are really having to lift my legs up. So you might want to take a cushion, soft cushion, or even your brick and pop it under your pelvic area and then roll back up. And then you'll find your hips are more in a position to dangle. So your thighs will come more happily over towards your chest. But make sure you've got something padding that area so that they're not really forcing down. And then with the arms here, I just like to take them out, not quite cactus arms, but resting them upwards above my head, but folded elbows, just gently resting the back of the hand on the floor. Now, again, you might feel the floor is cold or something's going on there, so you can always cushion or put a blanket under your hand. A cold wooden floor is not the place to do this sort of thing. Um, as I'm experiencing it now, I'm finding that that brick is making me draw my attention to that area. So I would in future think of cushioning that rather than using the brick. Anybody that wants to take it a little bit further and active from this position, you can just take your feet up and bring yourself into happy baby. So without the cushioning, I would suggest that you can try with the cushioning, but with your hip, hip on your brick, you're kind of getting a little bit more support than normal into Happy Baby. It helps you rock up into this position. Happy Baby is feet and hands attached on the outside edge of your foot. And your knees, your feet are parallel to the floor and your knees are coming down towards your armpits area. So that's the choice there. This is a really nice embryonic uh, position, I always think. You can always pop your hands, if you'd rather, onto your shins or the back of your thighs, just to put some weight there, to draw your legs down a little bit closer to your body. But have a quick scan and see if anything's really shouting at you, if anything's taking your attention, because you want to be able to completely relax. You can always find your breath again and think of the mantra that we've used this week, receive and give. Just to push away any of those thoughts that start to wander in. Restorative can be quite difficult for people to lie still. It's that lying still and being silent thing. Another mantra you can use is give in and give up. And thinking of looking at each tension point as you do that. So you would move around anything that's feeling tight and say, give in, give up with the breath. Okay, so we're going to move out of that one now when you're ready. If you really want to stay in any of these this morning and just listen to what we're doing for the rest of them and you found your your perfect position to start the day then just stay there don't move otherwise take your legs down one at a time move the brick obviously first and then keep a hold of that brick and we're going to go into a supported bridge here now this can be done in a very easy fashion so you can use that folded throw or the bolster thing that you've made instead of a brick and bring your feet in as if you're going to do bridge just gently lift your hips off the floor and place something under your pelvis. But the brick is much harder. Um, you just want to raise your pelvis slightly. It doesn't need to be a full bridge. You're just putting in a gentle inversion here. Again, then the shoulders become a little bit of a, 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 an awareness point. So you might want to pop some uh, cushioning under your shoulders or under your upper arms, which I can feel mine are dangling a little bit here. Just have a scan around your body and see where you can help pop something that would just release that area into the support. 
I can tell you where to pad, but it wouldn't necessarily be the right thing for you. I've tried padding when somebody's told me, and it ends up feeling more uncomfortable than I started. So find where you need. It might be that you don't want your legs up here. You might want to take your legs away from you and put a cushion or a rolled up thing behind your knees. The point of this isn't we're just lying down and relaxing. That's a big point of it. But we're also helping the blood to flow around us. Um, all those little cells that we spoke about yesterday, we're helping them work by moving things around ourselves gently, opening things, opening doors that they were maybe stuck at. So I haven't padded myself very much in bridge. There's a lot of padding you can do. You can also here, obviously, if you wanted, go into a more supported bridge by using your brick. But if you do try the two things, you'll find the brick really takes your awareness back to your body. And really what we want to do is switch off, not the awareness, but switch off the attention grabbing side of the body. So a little thing to think about while you're here in this position. Self-care is about giving the world the best of you instead of what is left of you. This is a form of self-care. This is yoga, but it's also a form of self-care, which yoga is indeed all the time. But sometimes we need to give ourselves that before we can give to others. And it feels a little bit indulgent on a Friday morning, but it's doing you good. And therefore it's doing others good. Okay, so we're going to come out of this one or stay in it, choose whichever. Take your feet back down to the floor once you've taken whatever's padded under your hips out. And we're going to come into a supported supine twist now. So obviously we've got two sides to do here. Now this might need quite a bit of padding. Doesn't normally, I know, but we're going to come into it. Oops. So you might want to take um, a padding between both legs before you roll over. You might want to pop some cushioning ready oops, to collect your legs as you come over. Again, if you just want to take the twist without the padding, that takes it away from restorative. It's more active and your body will have to switch on. But be careful because you haven't really worn up too much here. So bring your legs back into Apanasana or not quite squeezed in, but toward your thighs up towards your tummy. Both legs together. And then make sure you've got plenty of padding and a bit of height for your legs to be collected on. As you then just gently roll over towards whichever side the padding's on, obviously, and just let your legs settle. When you get there, you might have to move things. Your legs might want to separate slightly, that's fine. But again, you might have to repad. It's a case of just finding that comfort. I've padded too high, so you might want to take the padding a little bit lower down towards your calves. And then you might need to bring something in to pad your hip area. But make sure your legs fall over and then feel completely supported. So you won't have gone over completely to the floor like we normally try to do in a twist. But you're still getting that gentle twist through your right hand side in my case. Upper body, have a shuffle with the shoulders first of all. See if you can just release them into the floor. Head, you might want to just look upwards. If you look to your right, you're putting a bit more activeness into this. So that wouldn't be restorative so much for me anyway. Uh, it's moving towards more active if you look towards your right hand. So I'm going to look towards my left shoulder and bring my head to the same side as my legs. So you have a quick scan again. Is everything comfortable? Is anything holding on? If it is, then move and find some more padding. I've just let go of my lower hip 
and my legs have moved and that feels so much more relaxed. Um, I'm now crossing my ankles, for instance, that feels more relaxed. So let your legs settle. Try and let go of any holding. Again, you could cushion heads and hands and anything else that feels a little bit like it needs attention. And really, if they're now finding thoughts popping in, then actually, unusually, that's a good thing because what it means is your, um, your body has let you go. It's given in to the support because if your thoughts are actually going to body parts and you haven't quite settled yourself enough, but if you're thinking of the day ahead, then now we need to try and get the head to relax. Restorative will work on us physically, but if you can find it emotionally and switch off all those busy thoughts in your head, then it'll give you so much more. So I'm going to read half of a poem on this side and then I'm going to half read the rest on the other side. Sometimes all that we need is time to take care of ourselves, to love ourselves, and to nurture our souls. Sometimes all that we need is a little bit of time. So again, sorry about whistling through this, folks. We're going to take the other side because we do need to balance this. So gently come out of that side and then move all your padding. Get some extra padding. If you felt that wasn't enough for you, get some extra padding for hands or shoulders or maybe the head felt a little bit hard on the floor. Pad yourself and then move into the position by drawing your knees towards you and rolling over to the other side. Once you get there, do the same thing. Have a shuffle about, try and release that bottom hip. Try and relax your legs, which if they come apart and move into all positions, then that's still fine. Just want to feel that gentle twist is still there through your left side now, in my case. And then hands relaxed, not sticking out to the side necessarily, wherever they feel that you've just let go. Pop something warm under them if you need it. Make sure your head feels comfortable. So I'll go back to the poem now. We have a little bit longer in this side. So I'm going to read it from the beginning again. Sometimes all that we need Sometimes all that we need is time to take, take care of ourselves, love ourselves and nurture our souls. Sometimes all that we need is a little bit of time. Time to reconnect with ourselves, time to get back that inner peace we lost somewhere along the way. And time to get clarity that we need. Take it step by step, one day at a time. And instead of judging yourself, forgive yourself. Let go and give yourself the love you deserve. So get ready to move again. The time marches on. Time we've just spoken about giving ourselves. And time is always my enemy in my life. And at this moment in December, we probably all feel the pressure of time. So sorry, but we have to move on. But if that felt really nice, then try it again later. Again, as I say, you can try this on your bed. Really good. 
It might be that you don't want to curl up or roll over. It might be that you feel you need to open. And thinking of the emptying the head thing, let's just move quickly into one last um, position, which is Sphinx. So Sphinx, we did a little bit the other night there in a more restorative thing. If you take a rolled up blanket or your cushions, it doesn't need to be high, but it wants to be something that when you go onto your tummy in Sphinx, you want to have something under your ribs. Now that for me is still not quite high enough because I go quite high in Sphinx. But you can take your brick and you can go a little bit lower in Sphinx than normal. You can have your brick in its, on its second side Again, it's a bit hard, but I want to have that connection to my third eye, so that would be why I'd have something harder. If it's too hard, pop it on its side again and put a brick there. Take it away from your face, you don't want to feel claustrophobic. And then find your head in a comfortable position. So I'm not technically quite in Sphinx because I haven't brought myself right up into the back bend, but I'm taking my arms out now into more of a... Uh, goalpost arms. Again, you might want to pad there. It might feel a bit uncomfortable. You have to kind of shuffle about with this one to make sure. So you've got a bit of a back bend going on still. It is a version of Sphinx. Anybody that wants a higher version can come right up, a bit more active, pop the brick and tall, put it under your head and rest in this. Now I find because you have that connection, between the third eye area and something, particularly if using the hard area of the brick, but even with the cushion, it focuses much more on this area of me. So the rest of my body can then release and relax. So once I've settled it and padded it, it's a bit like giving the children something to do. They go off and they're quite happy and they don't disturb you. So then you can really focus on you, which to me is inside my forehead here. It may not be where you always are, but often that's where we find ourselves, busy, busy, busy in our heads. So by focusing on that area, I can then bring the breath to there to try and give and relax my head and all the chattering monkeys. So I find a nice thing to do here might be put on some music, not right now, obviously. And no, I'm not going to put it on. Julia, don't panic. <laughs> um, so you can bring in um, your mantra as you breathe. Or you can maybe find a little phrase that might um, mean something to you that you can learn and remember to say to yourself as a little mantra here. Um, I've got one here, for instance, was um, always give without remembering, always receive without forgetting. So something like that, that means something to you that you can repeat inside your head and get rid of all the chattering monkeys for a little bit. But something that's a little bit by rote, so you're not having to think too much about it. And focusing on that space on your forehead between your eyes. Maybe visualizing going inwards and seeing what's in there. Not the physical presence of your brain, but more all the little busy people that are running around with their clipboards telling you they've got something important to see. Smile at them and tell them to walk away. You'll talk to them later. So as I say, that's a nice one. If you feel it's your head that can't relax rather than just your body. Then we go back to time, which is marching on, and we have to come out of this and find ourselves in um, Shavasana. So take away your padding, find yourself in Shavasana. Now in Shavasana, we can pad if you want to, which is always nice if you mean to stay there for some time. One particular thing that a lot of people like is to pad behind their knees. So use your bolster or cushioning to just 
Pop something soft behind your knees. Maybe your heels then need a little bit of a cushion. Anywhere you're feeling pressure points, basically, you want to find some cushioning. Maybe the after a restorative session, though, finding those pressure points is quite a good thing gently in Shavasana because it wakens your body back up again. So once you've done restorative, you can feel a little bit woozy and um, it is quite nice to do some active movement after this. So I'm not going to have time to do it, but if you want some rock and rolls or windscreen wipers after this, just to waken yourself back up, get those little cells moving around in you again, then please take that. At the moment, we're just in Shavasana here for the last couple of breaths. So relax yourself by rolling your shoulders gently under yourself. If you've got padding, sink into it. Let your feet just fall out. Let your hands curl up if that's what they want to do. And that pressure point that we've just been on in your forehead. And let's take three more breaths into that area. And as we breathe in, think of receive, receive the energy now. And as you breathe out, give up the tension. Receive the energy. Give up the tension. One more breath, controlling it with those mantras. Receive the energy, give up the tension. Sighing the breath away on the last one. Let go of the breath. I'm just going to remind you by reading that little poem one more time, just to take this thought into the day with you and the weeks ahead towards Christmas. Sometimes all that we need is time to take care of ourselves, to love ourselves, and to nurture our souls. Sometimes all that we need is a little bit of time. Time to reconnect with ourselves. Time to get back that inner peace we lost somewhere along the way and time to get the clarity that we need. So take it step by step, one day at a time. And instead of judging yourself, forgive yourself, let go and give yourself the love you deserve. So you might want to continue to rest now in Shavasana. You might want to take some stretches or rock and rolls or things to move everything again. Connect again back to your body. You have been connected all along, but you've switched it off and let it be. So just make sure you're waking it back up before you move again. And then come back up when you're ready, if you're finishing now, to cross leg seated. So a restorative class, I have to apologize first of all, because 30 minutes is never enough in a restorative class, but we haven't got more time here. And if we were all together in the studio, we'd be padding and lying down for you know five to 10 minutes in each position to get that benefit. But this is really just, so you can play back the video and watch what we do and how we go into it and then rest in it. You can switch the video off each time and have, a little bit longer or stay in one pose. If you do the twist, make sure it's both sides though. But it's just to give you a little bit of an idea of what you can give yourself from using the poses that we use every day, but just with a different viewpoint and approaching them in a different manner. Might not be for you, it might have been a challenge, might not be what you needed on Friday morning. If it wasn't, then please have a few stretches, take a sun salutation or whatever you need now to get on with your day. But hopefully you can use the video at some point when you need it over the next few weeks. 
give yourself some time. Thank you, everybody. May the light in me always greet the light in you. Namaste.